Let's have a look how to find minimum and maximum of a function of two variables. So if we have a function f from r2 to r, similarly as for a function of one variable, we compute the first derivatives. <coughs> Let me start with some simple example. Consider the function fxy is equal to x squared plus y squared. First, we compute the partial derivatives f with respect to x, which is an abbreviation for the partial derivative of f with respect to x, and this will be 2x in this case. We compute the derivative with respect to y, which is just a short notation for f dy, which is in this case 2y. Then we want these two first order derivatives to vanish, to be equal to zero. And this is a system of two equations, which has a very simple solution. In this case, x is zero, y is zero. And now, this is not yet sure that the extremum occurs. We must consider the second derivatives. And for a function of two variables, we have two first order derivatives and we have four second order derivatives. And we can arrange these four second order derivatives in a matrix and this is called a Hess matrix and we will consider the determinant of this matrix. So H will be the determinant of the matrix consisting of these for second order derivative fxx, which is the second derivative of f with respect to f twice, fxy, fyx, and fyy. <coughs> if the second order derivatives are continuous, then these two mixed derivatives must be equal. In this case, uh, fxx is the derivative of 2x, which is 2 fxy is 0, fyx is 0, and fyy is 2. We compute the determinant of this matrix, which is 4, and it turns out this is positive. If the Hessian of this matrix is, if the determinant of this matrix is positive, that means there is an extremum. A minimum or a maximum. But we don't know yet which one of this is the case. And to see whether, whether this minimum or maximum, we look at the sign of these non-mixed derivative. This is positive. And these three results, the derivatives are equal to zero, the Hessian is positive, and the second order not mixed derivative is positive. So based on, based on these three results, we are sure there is a minimum. Let me show you that the positive Hessian is a signal for the extreme. Consider a general function of two variables and consider some stationary point, let's call it x0, y0. Then we can always shift the y-axis so that the result at this point is 0. We can always shift the x-axis so that x0 is indeed 0. Well, in general case, if it is non-zero, we can always introduce a new variable, let's call it x nu, which will be x minus x0, and we can always introduce y nu, which is y minus y0. That means we shift the x-axis and the y-axis so that the stationary point is at the origin. And we have the first order derivatives being 0 at the stationary point, so, at this point, we can approximate the function with a second order tail polynomial. Okay. 
and there is no absolute term because we have shifted z-axis. There are no first order terms because the, the first derivatives are equal to zero, so there are only quadratic terms. And let's write them in a form a y square plus b x y plus c x square. We can neglect the high order terms because for x and y very small, these higher order terms, these higher high powers will be much smaller than the second order terms. Okay, assume a function of two variables in this form, which is a quite a good approximation of a general function f. And we want to see, we want to find some test, some criterion, some condition for the function to have extreme room at zero at the origin. If the function of two variables is too complicated, let's consider how the function behaves in one fixed direction. By one fixed direction, we may consider a line y is kx. This is a line in the domain of definition in R2 going through the origin. Then a function at the point x, kx, when we substitute kx for y, is a, and y square is k square x square plus bx and y is kx plus cx square. We can factor out x square and we have a k square plus b k plus c. Now, the function value can be written in a form which can be decomposed as, as a product. Here, this term depends on x. That means how far away from the origin we are. Let's consider some small x. <coughs> Not zero. And this bracket does not depend on x, it depends on k alone. What is the meaning of k? k is the slope of the line along which we move away from the origin. So changing k, we change the direction in which we observe, we test, we evaluate the function. Okay, if we want a minimum at zero, then at the origin exactly, the function value is zero. And for this point to be a minimum, we want the function to go up in every direction, independent of k. Well, this will go up, this will increase, that's good, but we want also this bracket to be positive. Or, if we want a maximum, we want this bracket to be negative. In all directions, for all k. So we don't want this bracket to change its sign. So if we just write this equation, a k squared plus b k plus c, we don't want we don't want this equation to have a solution. We don't want this equation to have a solution. We don't want a k that means the direction where well, this bracket changes the sign from positive to negative. Because changing this bracket, if it changes the sign, it means that in some direction it goes up, in some direction it goes down. No extremum. We don't want this to be uh, to have a solution. We want for this equation to have no solution. No solution for k. But this is a quadratic equation. And we know how to find whether the equation has or has no solution using the discriminant. The discriminant of this equation is b squared minus 4ac. 
And for this equation to have no solution, we want no real solution, we want a discriminant to be negative. That means 4ac minus b squared must be positive. <coughs> but if we go back to our formula for f, this Taylor polynomial, this Taylor approximation, a is the a is one half of the second derivative with respect to y. B is the mixed derivative f x y, and C is one half of the second derivative with respect to x. So A C is one over four, product of the second order derivatives times four is just the product itself. And B is the mixed derivative. And square that. But this expression, fxx, fyy, minus fxy squared, is exactly the Hessian, the determinant of the matrix of the second derivative. So this is the explanation, or sort of proof, if you like, that for a function of two variables to have an extremum, the Hessian must be positive. Well, and then what about this condition? Well, this is related to the case of a function of one variable. You remember? Uh, if a function of one variable has zero derivative and positive second derivative, then we have minimum. And if uh, the second derivative is negative, we have a maximum. Well, perhaps a question might arise, should we look at fxx or fyy? Well, and what if these two second order derivatives have different sign? But in general, this is fxx, fyy, minus fxy, and if they are continuous, they are the same, so square that. Can it happen that these two numbers, when we evaluate at the decision point, these two numbers have different sign? If they have different sign, then the product is negative. Negative minus this one, that means negative, negative, that would be negative. But we are, at this moment, we are considering cases where the Hessian is positive. So, when the Hessian is positive, these two numbers must have the same sign, and it's not important whether you look at this one or this one. Fx is positive or Fy positive, the same. So, for positive Hessian, they cannot have different sign because this is in contradiction with this. Okay, we will apply this theory in one example in the next section.